Hey, AP Physics 1 students, Mr. Heinrich here, and we're looking at Unit 3, Progress Check 3. And if you have questions that I don't address, or maybe I don't go into enough depth for you, feel free to comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Go ahead and pause this, take a look at it. But basically, we need to develop a procedure with this system to find the spring constant of this spring. For Part A, here's Step 1. Put a photo gate at equilibrium. Step 2. Compress the mass and spring and measure the distance of compression. Record that distance. Step three, release the block and spring and record the velocity value taken by the photo gate. Step four, repeat steps one through three multiple times. All right, final step, step five. Repeat steps one through four for different compression distances. And that's it for part eight, we're done. So in part B, you determine how the data collected in part A could be graphed and how that graph would be analyzed to determine K0. So once again, here we have elastic potential energy at the initial position, and here we have nothing but kinetic energy. So I would say PE SP equals KE. I would plug in the correct expressions for each of these. One half KX squared equals one half MV squared. Some people put A in there for amplitude, and that's fine as well. The halves cross out, and I would solve for K, and let's call it K naught. So K naught would be equal to MV squared all over X squared. And you can see how this is the answer for part B. On the vertical axis, we would plot MV squared, that is my rise, and on the horizontal axis, I would plot x squared, that is my run. So if I'm formally stating an answer, I would simply say, on the vertical axis, plot mass times velocity squared. In parentheses, you could write, the velocity was obtained from the photo gate. On the horizontal axis, plot x squared. In the parentheses, you could say, the distance of compression from the meter stick. And finally, you could say a rise of mv squared versus a run of x squared would give you a slope equal to the spring constant. Done. All right, so this is part C. It's got three parts. This is the system that we're going to be looking at. We have a mass that's been compressed this length x. When it's released, it goes this far, distance d, from the edge of the table. And we have a height h that we know. We know the mass. And basically, we're looking at this x as our independent variable and this d as our dependent variable. So as you look through the verbiage, you can see our mass is 1.5 kilograms, k is 20 newtons per meter, the height is 0.8. So all of those things are constant, we know them, and here is the data that comes out. So we compress, this is our x, different lengths, all separated by a tenth of a meter, and then we achieve these different horizontal distances, d. The students correctly determined this expression, d is equal to x times the square root of 2kh over mg. All right, we're finally ready to get into part c. Indicate which measured or calculated quantity could be plotted on the horizontal axis to yield a linear graph whose slope can be used to calculate an experimental value for the acceleration due to gravity. You may use the remaining columns in the table as needed to record any quantities, including units, that are not already in the table. They're already telling us what has to go on the vertical axis, that is distance d. Now looking at the horizontal axis, we can make this whatever quantity we want that makes physical sense from this equation. I'm just gonna make it x, I'm gonna keep things simple. Now keep in mind, when I just put in x, that means that our slope is not gonna directly give us g. Our slope will give us some answer, some numeric answer, and we will set that equal to something that does have g in it. All right, let's move ahead. So C2, on the grid shown in figure three, plot the data points for the quantities indicated in part C1 that can be used to determine g. Scale the graph as appropriate. Clearly label the horizontal axis, including units. It's time to scale this axis right here. It's gonna be measuring x in meters. You should write that. This is 35 boxes and our top compression distance is 0.6. So on my calculator, I'm writing 0.6 divided by 35, and I get 0 0.017. That's pretty close to 0 0.02, meaning that each one of these little boxes will be worth 0 0.02. 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.
point zero eight point one. So every five boxes is a point one. All right, we've got everything ready to go. We've got our data to plot right here. We've got our horizontal axis scaled, and we've also labeled our horizontal axis X in meters. Let's plot some data. All right, to save us time, there's our data plotted. I'll go over a couple of these with you. Our Y axis is scaled in the same fashion as our X axis, so every box is worth 0 0.02. That means that this would be 0 0.31, and that is 0 0.2. As you can see right here, 0 0.31, 0 0.2. And then going to the very last piece of data, you can see we're at 0 0.85, that would be 0 0.84, 0 0.85, all the way over to 0 0.6. So there's our data set. Let's draw a line of best fit, but realize we've just done C2. So before I put the line of best fit in, I want you to realize something. Here, zero, zero makes sense. It makes sense with our physical system. If I don't compress this mass at all, zero X, I'm gonna get zero distance D. So in this case, it does make sense to use zero, zero. And that's gonna help me with a reference point for my line. I'm gonna start my line and I'm gonna pull it through till I've averaged out the data as best as possible. And it looks like that's about it right there. So that's it for part C3, let's go on to part D. Calculate an experimental value for the acceleration due to gravity G using the best fit line that you drew in part C3. So again, what we're looking for here are perfect intersection points with the graph paper. And I see one right there. So I'm gonna circle that real fast. And I found another one right here. So I'm gonna write out those coordinates. And those are my two sets of coordinates. So all I have to do now is calculate slope doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, there's my calculation of those coordinates, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, giving me a slope of 1.46. Notice there's no unit because it would be meters over meters, so it's a ratio. So how are we gonna use this answer to help us find g? We have to return to the student's equation. All right, here's their equation, d equals x times the square root of 2kh over mg. Now there's two ways to look at this. I want you to remember the general equation for a line is y equals mx. Can I get this thing to fit into each of these slots without doing too much work? The answer is yes. Didn't we put d on the y-axis? Didn't we put x, the compression distance, on the x-axis? You got it. And so that means this whole thing right here would be the slope. That is the slope. Now normally I don't show it like this. If you like the other way where I do slope is equal to rise over run, we can certainly do that real fast. If I rearrange this equation, I could say d divided by x, that is my rise, divided by my run, would be equal to square root of 2kh over mg. And once again, you can see Oh yeah, rise over run, that is the slope. So this was our answer for slope. I'm going to set this equal to this expression right here. So I'll have 1.46 equal to the square root of 2 times kh over mg. Let's get those values real quick. All right, here's our values. Mass is 1.5 kilograms, k is 20 newtons per meter, h is 0.8 meters, and we're looking for g. So that covers all the quantities. Okay, here we are with our final equation, and we have 20 newtons per meter is K, we have height as 0.8 meters, we have mass as 1.5 kilograms. Let's rearrange this expression, solve for G, get our answer and be done. So I'm gonna square both sides immediately, and I'm gonna calculate as I go. Next, I'm gonna multiply 1.5 to the top, divide all of these quantities to the bottom, get an answer, that is equal to one over G. Okay, that's done. And finally, all we have to do is flip the expression around so that g is equal to 32 over 3.20. And there's our last step. We divide 32 by 3.20 and we get 10. And that's exactly what we would expect to get for something like g. Keep in mind the units are right here and they make sense as well. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared divided by a kilogram, those cross out, and sure enough, we get meters per second squared as our unit, and D done. All right, I hope that helped you out. Like and subscribe, leave me a comment. I'll talk to you in the next one. Have a great day.